Hey, I'm Lisa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am spilling my guts and telling you all things about how I do it all. How do I balance almost seven children and a very busy entrepreneurial lifestyle? Come and take a seat with me. So I want to start all of this off by sharing with you, if you haven't watched last week's video yet, you might want to go watch that because it'll give you a sense of where I've come in my business and where my business is now going and just give you a little bit of context for some of the significant pain points that have informed a lot of the things I'm gonna share in this video. So I wanna start at the beginning and share with you some of the limiting beliefs I had around motherhood. So I had my first baby at the age of 25 and 25 was also a time when I was trying to prove myself as a legitimate business owner and an interior design professional because let me tell you I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder in terms of trying to prove myself and I really cared about what people thought. So I was battling a little bit of like career identity and then I was also thrust into the very real crazy world of what happens when you have a child for the very first time. And let me just say that having a child for the first time radically changes your identity. You are a completely different person, and this is a good thing. However, it can be really hard to navigate when you are so used to defining yourself by things like your career, things that you outwardly produce, and all of a sudden you're shifted completely into the world of diapers and laundry and sleepless nights and where you feel like you don't accomplish anything in a day, but really you are. You're keeping a child alive, can I tell you? So it was a very interesting time when I had my first job. And basically for the first five years of my motherhood career, I felt like I had to prove it all. I felt like I had to be the best mother, the best wife. I felt like I had to you know, create beautiful meals. I had to have a beautiful home. I had to have laundry put away all the time, on and on and on and on, pressure, 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 pressure. And at the same time, I felt like I had to be the best business owner. I had to have magazines writing about me. I had to have money in the bank. Pressure, 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 pressure. And this did not work. This was too much pressure, oh my word. And I very quickly realized in about year five of my motherhood and business ownership career um, that it was just simply not possible to do everything with great success. James Clear wrote a blog post on his four burners theory. And I'm actually just gonna read it to you because I'm just gonna butcher it if I try to give you a synopsis. So basically he says, imagine that your life is represented by a stove with four burners on it. Each burner symbolizes one major quadrant of your life. One, your family. Two, your friends. Three, your health. Four, your work. The four burners theory says that in order to be successful, you have to cut off one of your burners. And in order to be really successful, you have to cut off two. And I remember when I read this particular blog post, I was like, that's exactly it. Like, it's just not possible to have all four burners going at great success, especially when your kids are really young. But to be honest, I don't think it matters. Even when your kids are older, like I now have kids who are in school and it's a whole other slew of problems. They might be off at school, yeah. You might have them for less hours of the day, technically, but there are still a lot of things that like are involved in raising children um, that take up your mental, you know, space mentally. And so I think this four burners sort of theory is really interesting. And definitely by year five of my motherhood and entrepreneurial journey, I was really feeling the pains of not enough time for all those burners. It's not fun to constantly feel like you're walking on eggshells um, with your family. It's not fun to feel like you're constantly failing your family. Um, it's not fun uh, to feel like even when you are at work having fun, your mind is somewhere else because you feel just so gosh darn guilty that you couldn't make it to a school performance or you couldn't um, be there to volunteer at the school trip or what have you. Like, oh, it was just a mess. And so I knew I had to make a change. One of the changes that I made that I shared in last week's video was reverse engineering my business around my strengths. But I also reverse engineered my life. <laughs> I basically just had to look at all of the areas of my life, which included like house, the house maintenance, car maintenance, cooking, cleaning, laundry. I just had to get so strategic and basically say like, what in these things 
do I have to do? What in these things could anyone else do? And what in these things could we delete completely? Oh my word. Just even if you did that exercise alone, I think you could save so much time. And then I would say about two years ago, uh, so this is like year seven, year eight of my parenting and entrepreneurship journey, we hit another crossroads where my husband and I, even though we had worked really hard to reverse engineer my business, to really streamline our life, to get really clear in our priorities, we were still feeling the strain um, and I think one of the biggest impacts of that was kids going to school. I've got six kids, almost seven, ages nine, seven, six, four, three, and 18 months. And then babies coming in about, oh my gosh, I'm like two weeks away. This is insane. We always had some kind of capacity of childcare, whether it was my parents, uh, whether it was Josh and I taking shifts like literally because he had such a flexible schedule there was a period in time when he was the primary stay at home um we've had part-time nannies in various capacities in various hours like we've literally done it all when it comes to both hired childcare and non-hired childcare, like my mom um but we hit a crossroads because things were starting to pile up the whole four burners like the laundry was piling up, the, the, the grocery shopping, we were finding, we were constantly like, oh my gosh, we're out of milk. Um, the dishes were piling up, everything was piling up and it was just becoming so chaotic. And my husband and I literally turned to each other and we just said, okay, either we have to bring in more help, more regular help, or one of us has to stop working so that we can have stability in the home. My husband also suffers quite openly from depression and anxiety, and we've done a whole bunch of videos if you'd be curious about our journey and how we handle mental illness in our family. So that definitely made, um, you know, that definitely weighed on our consideration as well. But I really felt in my heart of hearts that we're being called to continue to do the things that we were both doing. And so for us, what ended up working out was hiring a full-time live-in nanny. So we worked with a private agency to bring in a nanny. Um, she is originally from the Philippines uh, via Hong Kong and um, came to us and she's been with us now for just over a year and it has just changed everything. So here is the secret, you guys. How I do it all is because I personally do not do it, okay? This is a huge thing that you need to hear me say. I do it all by not personally doing it all. So let's unpack some of these very practical things I'm talking about. Number one, with the addition of our nanny and our household, the majority of household chores are not done by me. So she has basically on autopilot, the laundry, the cooking, the regular tidying, um, the, even just like making sure that there's not expired food in my fridge. That is now all stuff that I don't have to think about anymore. Um, we have cleaners who come in and do a deep, deep clean every two weeks. And with a family my size, with small toddlers at home all day, you can you just let me just tell you, it gets dirty, really dirty. Um, and we both work from home, so we're, we're here also contributing to the dirt. And so we have a deep clean every two weeks. Um, things like maintenance on my home, when I change my furnace filters, how much toilet paper I have in the house, um, like household maintenance stuff I have on literally recurring appointments in my phone. There was a time when we had Amazon deliver toilet paper because I knew exactly how much toilet paper went through my house. Like that's how automated um, parts of our life are. Things like meal planning and grocery shopping, I do not do. I have automated those things. So I have HelloFresh delivered once a week. I utilize things like click and collect at Loblaws and M&M, um, where you just you know, type in your order online and then you roll up in your car and they bring it to you. It's so automated. Right now I'm currently sort of vacillating between going physically myself to Costco and doing click and collect. Um, I'm currently doing click and collect more at Loblaws because I am like almost nine months pregnant and I don't want to waddle around Costco. Uh, but up until very recently, Costco was just simply part of my routine. Um, and it was fairly, like I said, automated. Like it was in the routine. I knew exactly what day, what time I was going to Costco. I never had to even think about it. There are so many things in my life that I no longer even think about because they are scheduled or someone else is thinking about it. And that's how I'm able to then invest in uh, self-care time for me. Um, a regular date night with my husband, individual time with my kids, um, you know, ability to work, ability to um, 
do the things that are my blue flame. Jennifer Fulweiler just wrote this book called One Beautiful Dream and she talks about this whole notion of a blue flame that's inside of all of us, that lights us up, that gives us energy that we could do for like four hours and like don't not get tired, that looks like work to someone else, but for us is so much fun. And so by automating so many of the other systems in my life, by outsourcing them to other people, by delegating, by deleting, I then have more time to continue to, um, you know, tend to my blue flame and lean into things that give me a lot of joy and a lot of passion. And the interesting thing about blue flame things, so these things in your life that give you so much energy, is then you're able to share that energy with your family. Here's what I've learned that has taken me a while to figure out, that I, I filmed a video called Should a Mom Work? And I feel like I could film it again with this sort of renewed or sort of, um, different vernacular around it. I tried to explain this blue flame concept in that video, but I didn't have it as sort of clearly mapped out in my head. Jennifer Fulweiler's book really helped me to understand exactly what I was trying to say in that particular video. I'll put that in the cards though, um, because that one, uh, that one always elicits a bit of debate, that video. Um, but basically, you can only go for a certain period of time, a limited period of time, where you are just giving, 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 but not tending, not fueling the things that give you fire before you burn out. And I think a lot of moms today kind of have this notion that you're supposed to sacrifice everything for your family. And let me tell you, motherhood requires sacrifice. It's not what I'm trying to argue. It requires immense sacrifice, but you will burn out, shrivel up and die inside if you don't tap into these blue flame activities, even if it's just like 15 minutes a day or 15 minutes a week, I don't care what it is, but you have to do the things that gave you passion, that filled you up, that gave you energy before you became a mom. Those things don't go away just because you produce children into this world. So again, what does this look like practically? So I've already named a couple of the things. Um, cleaning is outsourced. Um, grocery shopping and meal planning is automated. I delete a lot of things. I like, for example, if I'm asked to bake something for like a bake sale or whatever, I'm like, I'm sorry. I just, this is not a priority for me to bake, but here's $20. Like I, I just, that's how legitimate straight up. Like it is not my blue flame to bake my friends. I don't even know if I own a rolling pin or if I, I don't even think I own mixing bowls. Like honestly, I do not bake. It does not give me life. I totally respect it gives a lot of other people life, but it does not give me any life. And so if I'm ever asked to do stuff like that, delete. And the way I delete is here is a $20 donation for the bake sale, or here is a store-bought cake for whatever it is that I was supposed to bake for. You don't have to do things the way other people do things if it's not something that brings you joy, okay? Use this video as permission to delete, to automate, to delegate all the things that you can so that you can focus on the things that really matter to you. Guys, gonna keep it super real here, okay? Are you ready? So my nanny, she gets two weeks holiday. And very recently my nanny took her holidays and can I just share with you that strategic thinker Lisa over here didn't really strategize that time. And I tried to do it all. So meaning I tried to do all the work, all the YouTubing. I canceled appointments, but that wasn't enough. Like I tried to do all the things I used to do before we had a full-time nanny and it didn't work. Okay, like again, I, I just like, I have to be so transparent here. It did not work. The laundry piled up. I was up until 2 a.m. editing YouTube videos. I, the house was an absolute disaster. We had no food. Like I did not plan strategically during that time because so much of my life is on autopilot. So if you look at me and you look at my Instagram and you look at this channel and you're like, oh my gosh, how on earth does Lisa do it? Hear me loud and clear. I do it all by not personally doing it all. Does that make sense? 
Can you please let me know in the comments below if that makes sense? I share all of this so vehemently because I think we set ourselves up for failure when we compare and think that, oh my gosh, like, look at so-and-so doing it this way. I have to be able to do it this way too. No, no. We all have different capacities for energy. We all have different capacities for strategy. What works for one mom is not necessarily going to work for another. But what universally works for all moms, all moms, when we design our lives around what matters most to us, that is when we can alleviate the guilt and the exhaustion that comes from constantly chasing something that someone else wants. I hope this video has perhaps challenged you a little bit. I'll be very honest, this is a vulnerable video for me to share because I don't want you to think that it's just like magic. Lisa just pays for everything and magically everything is automated, delegated and deleted. No, friends, my friends, this has taken me nine years to figure out. My oldest child is nine, going on 19. I have struggled with various levels of financial ability to afford childcare. I had huge amounts of guilt around hiring my nanny. I, I thought it was like I was giving up on motherhood and that I should somehow miraculously be able to keep my house tidy and clean and a business running. I should just be able to do it all. These shoulds are not helpful, okay? They're not helpful. It, it, and again, it's not possible, like the James Clear thing with the four burners. It's just not possible. Something has to give at some point. And so you are the one who gets to decide very much in a lot of different ways what gets to give. And so I just hope this video gives you freedom, gives you perhaps a little bit of strategy, gives you um, maybe some inspiration on how you could design your life around the things that matter most to you. And if you like this video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and that bell. And just leave me a comment. What is something in your life that you could automate, delegate, or delete right now in the pursuit of achieving your dreams, achieving a more balanced, healthy, and joy-filled life? Let me know. Until next time, cheers to designing your beautiful life.